Hi, this is Florian. This is the second part of the tutorial to show you how to quantify mature mRNA in FishQuant. In the first part, we performed the pre-detection to identify spot candidates that will now be fit with the 3D Gaussian to localize them exactly and extract additional parameters that can be used to differentiate between noise and real spots. We implemented in FishQuant the capacity to perform parallel computing. This means that you can use multiple the multiple cores in your computer if you have so. But in order to use this, you need to have the parallel computing toolbox. In order to connect to this toolbox, you simply click enable the parallel computing option. This will start the MATLAB pool. This is a one-time operation that takes a few seconds to be completed, so I'll just please wait until you see the corresponding status update. Then you can fit the spots by simply clicking on fit. This will be performed for all of the cells in the images. It takes a little while. And then as soon as the fit is performed, you see a number of plots that appear. You have these plots that are shown for each individual cell. So if you want to switch in between the cells, you can change this down here, where you move from cell 1 to cell 2. For each of the, um, of the detected spots in the cell, you see here a maximum projection in XY, in XZ, and this is uh, a maximum projection of the residuals between the actual image and the fit. More interestingly, you have here on the on the side um, histograms of all of the detected uh, spots for the various parameters that ha have been estimated for the 3D Gaussian. So we have the sigma xy, where you see the sigma xy on x and the number of spots having this particular sigma xy. The same thing for the sigma z, the amplitude, background and a few other parameters. Based on those uh, parameters, you can then further exclude uh, spots. Uh, usually spots that are associated to noise have very large sigma xy's and sigma z's. So you can simply move the loud, uh, the upper and lower boundary with those two sliders. You can could also change the values here to set this one to 280. In order to apply, you can click here. If you like that, you can lock the values and then move to another parameter that even a threshold. You're always going to see the complete histogram of all spots on the right side and on the left side the histogram that has been obtained with the already locked parameters. So you can further threshold the data, for instance, based on the sigma z. If you save the detection settings, as I will show you in a few seconds, those thresholding parameters will also be saved. The usual workflow in FishQuant is then that you use those detection settings in the batch processing. Here you can still, however, change those thresholding parameters. So if you load the detection settings, those parameters will come up, but you can refine them which is often easier in the batch processing toolbox because there you have really the pooled results of all the individual uh, cells in one histogram so it's much easier very often to set those uh, thresholding parameters. A last tool that I just want to quickly show you that you have also accessible from the batch processing is the spot inspector. This is another user interface that you can call where you select first the cell that you want to inspect. You select the spot inspector here. You click on visualize spots and another toolbox, another GUI will open. Here you see the cell with all the detected spots. In green the spots that are left after they passed the threshold test and the blue spots are the spots that were rejected based on those thresholds. You have a number of things that you can change here, so you can also switch between the cells. You can show the image either as a maximum projection or as the 3D stack, where you can simply move through the 3D stack. 
you can show either the raw image or the filtered image. The feeding is done on the raw image, not on the filtered image. You can change the contrast of your image. You can zoom in and out. You can pan. You can zoom out again. And what's interesting is this option here. It's the data cursor, cursor that allows you to inspect the individual fits. So you can go here, double click on this fit on this spot. You see in the left column the actual image data, and on the right column the corresponding fit. This option here is only available from the main interface, but not if you use the batch processing. Uh, we don't store the information of the individual fits if you process a large number of cells. So you see here the quality of the fit. It also allows you to inspect the size of the region that you defined for the pre-detection. So if it's big enough or maybe too small or too large. So we set plus minus two pixels in XY and plus minus two uh, pixels in Z, which is uh, sufficient for, uh, for spots under those experimental conditions. So here you can also verify if those um, if the size of the region is really uh, good. And what you also see here on the on the right side are the details of the estimated parameters, so the sigma x, sigma z, amplitude and background for this particular fit. You can then click on another spot and inspect so the spots and verify that the pre-detection that, that the thresholding settings that you chose are good and allow you to select the correct spots. So you can close this. In the last step you can now save uh, the results of the detection. You go to the main menu, save results of spot detection. Here first the detection settings were saved, will, will be saved because each of the results file has a link to the detection settings that you always know what settings you used for this detection. I already have a detection file that I just overwrite. And then the actual results file will be saved, which is the name of the image followed by underscore underscore spots.txt. Again, I'm gonna just overwrite an already existing file. I can specify a user comment if I want or simply press cancel for no comment. And what I'm going to have now in FishQuant is that the program generated those files in the results folder. So we have one file that specifies all the settings that were used. The details are uh, explained in the, in the help file and another text file that contains for each of the detected spots all the parameters that have been estimated. So each row here corresponds to one spot where all of the parameters that were used to uh, describe this spot are saved. Again in the help file you find a more detailed explanation of those. The next step now is to um, go to the batch processing and analyze all cells together in order to do that, we need to save the settings file that we already did because we saved the results file. If you don't want to save the results file and you only want to save the settings file, this option is also available. Simply in the main menu, you can go to save detection setting and we can just save the detection settings. We can call it FQ underscore settings mature. Again, it will be saved in the results folder and then we are all set to move to the um, batch processing. So I invite you to watch the next tutorial on the batch processing of mature mRNA.